So we're here with Keith Emerson and Sonic Reality. How are you? All right, Dave. Fine, yeah. Good <laughs> and, to see uh, you again. Good to see you. So uh, let's start off with uh, talking about your, your latest project that you're working on. Tell me about that. Yes. Well, um, I've been involved with orchestras since the late 60s. Um, first with the uh, with my 60s band, The Nice, and then mm. uh, with uh, Emerson, Lake and Palmer in the um, in the 70s where we actually were, uh, took a huge risk by touring with an, an orchestra hand-picked um, basically because most of the material that I was writing at that particular time lent itself to orchestration and orchestral sounds although the um, the Moog synthesizer that I was using at the time managed to augment my keyboard sounds along with the Hammond organ. It um, it wasn't quite like um, the uh, the orchestrations that I, I was c coming up with at that particular time. I should get around to the project I've just done in a second. <laughs> I'm diversity. I'm just giving you a brief history here. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so uh, it's amazing to think that back then, when I was using the Moog synthesizer, that it was it was banned by the uh, British music, uh, sorry, the British Musicians Union, uh, because they thought it was threatening to their players. You know, it could uh, imitate the trumpet, it could do that. But of course, everything has changed now. Sure. I, I think, although unions are unions, and they can still uh, to you know, still disrupt many a thing, and you. The sad thing is, you, of course, you have to be a member uh, if you want to work with other union members. So that that was it. So uh, <clears throat> yeah. So I I persisted in this, and uh, thankfully things have changed quite dramatically, really. Whereas orchestras aren't, they don't feel threatened by. Um, synthesizers or sampled music um, so I think that's the importance of uh, my working with sonic reality and um, getting these sounds out to the next generation uh, which uh, obviously wants to um, experiment with uh, with the sort of sounds which I used and the original sounds. Um, I recall when I was um, in my formative years when I heard Jimmy Smith and his Hammond sound. Uh, I spoke with um, uh, Brian Auger, the great Brian Auger. Uh, uh, I, I love him tremendously. Uh, and, and he, I think his first Hammond was an M100. My first Hammond organ was an L100, but both of us were, although Brian's slightly older than me, um, both of us had the frustration of not getting the same sound that came out of the B3 and C3. So it was some time later, but uh, I, I remember, you know, in my formative years, if I'd have had a sample of uh, that uh, B3, C3 of Jimmy Smith's, I would have been in absolute heaven. It was the same thing as uh, my being able to find the music to Dave Brubeck's Raggy Waltz or Take Five. You know, you, you could hear it in England on the radio, but it wasn't that accessible. And uh, so that was it. So I think it's a it's a marvelous idea, and I think um, young players today need all the encouragement that they can get, you know, um, you know, and then there are certainly a lot of wonderful younger players these days, which is really quite incredible. But what I've been doing in Munich recently is playing with the Munich Symphony Orchestra, which is a mixture of uh, the Munich Symphony and the Bavarian Symphony. And um, we've got to utilize uh, a lot of the, the Moog sounds, 
against the orchestra uh, and also um, resurrecting a lot of uh, the back catalogue the repertoire that uh, ELP were playing uh, things such as The Endless Enigma uh, Abaddon's Bolero Tarkus uh, all played live with the orchestra with just the Moog added or drums and other instrumentation uh, yeah I've got I've got my um, my band with me as uh, you know rock drums and bass and uh, obviously Mark Bonilla uh, who's kind of producing the whole thing Mark Bonilla is uh, obviously on guitar there's no vote there's no vocals so it, it does allow the listener to concentrate mainly on the uh, the sonic reality. <laughs> cool. So when is that expected to be uh, finished? I know that you're doing some overdubs in the next couple of weeks. Yes. Um, I would hope in the next month. Um, I, I'm not sure about a release date as yet, but uh, we'll work it out. <clears throat> um, we're sort of free to approach any sort of record label, really. So it's, at the moment, it's not designed for any specific record label. It's mainly designed for <coughs> that, the, the, the listener, and um, I'm sure they'll all recognise the, um, the, you know, what I've written uh, with the, with the LP. And then there's some new pieces there as well, which I won't get into. But it's uh, it's really quite. Intense. Cool. I mean, particularly Tarkus. Gosh, <laughs> yeah, I didn't think. Uh, you know, when I wrote that in 1971, I never thought that an orchestra would be able to uh, play it, rather than be accepting to recording it. Mm -hmm. Speaking of Tarkas, have you seen um, this uh, Rachel Flowers performance? Oh gosh, how many people have asked me about her? <clears throat> uh, I think I'm sort of uh, lined up to meet her at some point. Uh, no, she's a very, uh, from what I've seen from her on YouTubes and things like that, um, a, a very, very talented lady. and. Uh, as I understand it, she had a, uh, some sort of a robbery which I contributed to. Is that right? Uh, yes, I did. Yes. Um, no, she's very <coughs> amazing talent. And uh, so, yes, I'm, I, I will meet her at some point. I just haven't had the time recently, but I, I, I will find the time to meet her. Yes. Cool. And you've obviously seen the videos. And oh, gosh, yes, yes. I've <laughs> yeah, she's you, quite awesome. <laughs> what do you think about um, young players playing your music many years later? And, you know that kind of proficiency. Oh, it's attention to well, obviously, it's it's very very flattering, um, and it can also be slightly scary because sometimes <laughs> they play better than what I do. You know, <laughs> so you know, it's uh, <laughs> yeah, it's. Um, it is it is great, but you know all generations of musicians move one step further each time. Um, I've often said to young young musicians that have approached me and said, uh, "Gosh, I'm playing like you." You know, okay, fine. I've listened to some, and Rachel Flowers is obviously the closest to how I perceived my music. But um, <clears throat> sometimes I've asked, the, I've told the musicians, don't actually listen to me, listen to who I listen to. And then you will know a little bit more about what made me write these particular pieces. Um, <clears throat> and I think if um, the next generation of players have the facility to be instantly able to recall the, the sort of sounds that I used and, and which inspired me. Right? Uh, it's it's going to help them take it that step further forward. You know? Sure.